Hello and welcome back to Northrend. So we are exactly where we left off, in the uh, the Howling Fjord, nice little place. And uh, let's go talk to Old Man Stone Mantle, because I'm sure whatever he has to say is totally worth it. He wants to go to the Steel Gate. Well, the plan that I said last episode, I was going to head down here to this scout. So that's what I'll do. I'll take the nice scenic route. We're looking the very, very cool uh, terrain of, of this land. So today's episode, in terms of what I'm going to talk about, it's going to be monetization policies. <laughs> Which I'm sure is horrifically interesting to everyone, but it does, you know, as people who watch YouTube, it does affect you in a direct way. Um, so, the first example of this is Final Fantasy XIV. Now, I just bought the game today, and in light that they have reversed their monetization policy so that you're allowed to monetize them on YouTube, hooray! Uh, the other other way it was is um, that you weren't allowed to, they start copyright striking your channel, bullshit like that. And that's very good because what it means is, you know, YouTubers can go ahead without fear and make videos on their games. And that's why you guys are going to get to see some content for Final Fantasy XIV because, well, it's an MMO, there's a lot of buzz about it and people think it's pretty good. So I think it's, uh, it's probably going to be worth covering. It looks kind of cool, it's probably going to be a little bit too kind of Japanese-ish for me. I usually get hung up on their art style, especially when it comes to characters. I think the male characters just look like stupid... Like, they just look like dumb models and the female characters are just... Like, way, way too horrendously over-sexualized. I, I just don't... I know, they don't look like... They don't really look like characters that fit in, uh, in whatever lore they're in. To me. But anyway, whatever. Apparently it's a very good, competent game, so I'm going to be covering it. And the next thing that I was planning on covering, but I may or may not, due to monetization policies, is Rome 2 Total War, and this makes me really sad. And the reason I'm doing this is because, right now, the only way to do, um, like, to do proper YouTube commentary for a channel like me that's really trying to be serious and, you know, have things being good, is to obtain a license from them. I have no idea how to get one. I sent them an email to the like the PR address, but you know, two and a half thousand subscribers, they don't even know who I am. And <laughs> they don't care. And you know, if you want to like other examples of YouTubers that have had problems with this, Troll Biscuit, he's been uh, boycotting Sega for the past six months now and has no intentions of stopping because of the absolute bullshit anti-new media um, policies that they have. One second, this quest, I need to find these ever-burning torches. There we go. Like this horrible plague gloop on fire. So yeah, it is actually quite a problem uh, with just trying to shut down things. And I understand their argument because their argument is more... It's not anti-new media, but it's anti-let's play. The, um, the way of thinking is that let's players really diminish. They diminish from a game. You know, why buy a game when you can let's play it? And actually, I do see that and... I personally do not watch Let's Plays, I don't think they're very good. I think they're probably the easiest content to make. Like, you'll notice any time that I move on to a Let's Play-ish thing, it's, you know, in these videos I talk about topics, and this is really just a, a way to make it palatable to my audience, but, you know, right now I'm talking about a topic. Last few episodes I was talking about relevant things, not just kind of going around and riffing off uh, the game's resources with very little of my own creativity to it. So I see why a lot of the companies are anti like YouTube because of Let's Playing. But I still don't think that it's right to be putting in all these restrictive policies and stuff because it just screws over the people who are really, you know, who have passion for your game and want to bring that passion to their audience. Which is what I want to do. And uh, restricts us. And the thing is too, they're shooting themselves in the foot. I mean, imagine if Minecraft had have launched uh, saying that YouTube channels can only like do proper content with... Uh, with a license from Mojang. Holy crap, Minecraft would not be anywhere near as popular as they are now. So yeah, that's like my main rant over. But it did kind of piss me off seeing that. Thankfully Blizzard are very good. They say that, you know, of course you're not allowed to like completely use their stuff um, in a ridiculous manner to profit off it, but for things like YouTube or creative things, they're completely cool with you using their gameplay, they're cool with you using their cinematics, their art assets, everything. Um, because they understand how much of a positive thing this is to their property. Which is nice, so yeah, you go Blizzard. 
I've always been pretty good towards new media, YouTube, that kind of thing. Is there a... yeah, Blizzard are... they continue to be a good crowd. Who'd have thunk it? That is the kind of thing I would say. But anyway, we've just dealt with the undead, so the reason we did that quest is because they're trying to spread their plague everywhere. And the plague's not very nice. Uh, we don't like it at all. So, that's why this guy wanted us to deal with it. It's kind of unfortunate, I thought we'd be going towards the Cadillac. They're really cool. Um... Ah, oh, I don't think there's really any upgrades for me. Hmm. Now we need to go and get the Apothecary's package from Hellgrind. Hellgrind's a really nice place to call your town, isn't it? Hmm. Not exactly the best. Oh god damn, this place is still just... It's weird, every episode I just kind of get taken aback by just how cool it all looks. Um... It's funny, my love of Northrend has nearly kind of came through in my videos. Um, like in Warcraft Daily, a lot of people probably wouldn't have noticed this, but the whole background of the show, like the overlay, is actually, uh, it's actually a Northrend bit of concept art for Arthas. I just applied a few blur filters and stuff to it because I thought it looked cool. So there you go. That's where the overlay comes from. And the big dragon's dead. Oh, another thing I should talk about, Star Citizen. You probably saw on the channel, um, well, as of the time of recording, yesterday night, really early this morning, I posted a video of the Hangar module, and I'm really looking forward to that game. Essentially, it's a space game, but it's pretty interesting the way they're launching it. And so, all the ships, like, that you can pre-purchase with your, you know, like, when you back, essentially when you kickstart, you can, you know, get a package that includes a ship. They're all available in-game, so it's not buying power or anything, and the game's not going to be free to play or any of that bullshit. Um... And it's like, you know, full physics-driven space game, but it's coming out in different parts, so... The first part that's coming out is the hangar module. And it's more just that people, you know, the backers can have a look at the different ships they've ordered, and they can walk around them in real, you know, 3D, in like, real time, and... Just see what they're like inside, and honestly, the ship I've got is pretty much like a BMW with guns in space, which is quite a awesome concept. And I love it. So, there's that, and that's the hangar module. The next thing will be coming out the end of 2013, and it's the dogfighting one, so it'll have the full physics-based combat. And to give you an idea of just, like, how physics-based it is, um, they're, they're like, fly-by-wire, like an F-15. But the way it works is, say, you want to go up. So you pull up in your joystick or your gamepad or whatever. Instead of it just, the game just moving your ship, it tells uh, the thrusters, like, you know, I want this much thrust, I want to go this direction. The thrusters then communicate back to the flight computer. This is all like simulated and stuff, and uh, that will calculate how, the, like, let's say the thrusters move. Now the cool thing is that in combat, what happens if one of your thrusters is damaged? What happens if one of your weapons is damaged? That's all affected by your ship. And the main way I think this game will be played is first person in the cockpit, which is very nice, very immersive, and will go very well with an Oculus Rift, which I do plan on purchasing for this game. So, oh yeah, it's awesome. Anyway, after the the, um, the dogfighting module comes out, the main single player thing will be coming out. The single player, it's pretty much Wing Commander. If you don't know uh, what Wing Commander is, um, actually, you know, when I look at the channel's demographic, I think the average age is 30-something, so you guys probably know at least a little bit of what Wing Commander is. Um, Wing Commander is an awesome game, it, and the single player of Star Citizen be rather similar to it, you know, the sort of great space combat games of old. Then after that, they're releasing the full Persistent World. Let me go down here. And the full Persistent World looks extremely cool. It's pretty much the galaxy, you have your ship. Um, it's kind of like an MMO, I suppose. Really cool, like dynamic economy based on supply and demand, the player factions, loads of different ways to play the game. Cool stuff. It seems to be like that, like a lot of people get really excited or interested over EVE Online. Where the hell am I going? Take something and minister to the, yeah, the prisoner. A lot of people get really interested over EVE Online. And then they actually play the game and they notice it is spreadsheets in space and they don't find that fun. God damn it, where is this prisoner? <laughs> hmm. So it seems to be like a proper combat -y version of that. Now, more importantly, where the damn is this prisoner? Shit. It's right in front of me, which would mean it's inside this base, wouldn't it? Um, I can't get 
Oh. I need to open the gate. Who'd have bloody thought it? <laughs> oh, hey, I'm an idiot. Let's go in here. Hello, prisoner. Are you thirsty? Would you like a drink? Well, I can provide you with a drink. <laughs> I'm sure this will go well for our good uh, Rykul chap here. I'm very sure it'll go well. I'm just going to move my microphone. There we go. So he doesn't look too pleased. I think we can gather that. I'm just going to rip off a bit of my pretzel. Tesco now do, like, baked in-store cinnamon pretzels. So now, uh, he's a, he's a lump of goo. Hmm. Lovely. A lump of feckin' goo. Anyway. Let's go hand this quest in. So it seems indeed that the Undead have managed to, uh, to weaponize their plague. Which is not very good for us because, well... When I go out on a, you know, normal, say, Tuesday, when I go out on a Tuesday, my general goal is not to be turned into a puddle of goo. And so far, you know, I've reached, I've reached this, uh, this amount of uh, age, so I've been pretty successful in that. Hmm. What is our next thing to do? Hmm. Go tell the captain. Hello, Captain. You know that really high-value prisoner? We kind of turned him into a lubble, uh, a lubble? No, a puddle of goo. Hello. Adams doesn't really strike me as a dwarf name. Hmm. Yeah, he's not very happy. But, this allows us to go bombing. And bombing's always fun. And, uh, more specifically to New Agmand. That place just sounds evil. <laughs> Hmm. The question is, where is the damn majigger? Hmm. Shit. I have no idea where the mount is. Oh, go to Steelgate. Hmm. Oh no, it's over here. New Agmand, yeah. Hmm. Oh shit, I'm confused. Oh, it makes sense if I go to the Flight Master, wouldn't it? Hello, Flight Master. Ah, there we go. Uh, let's go and talk to him. Let's roll! I should probably put these on my bars. Huh, how many gave me ten? Skimpy bastards. It's a dynamite in this game. And hey, we got another panoramic view of the beautiful scenery. Yeah. The music's not really fitting with this whole burning, is it? Nah, it's not. I'm really pissed off I live there. House prices must have plummeted since, you know, the entire neighborhood caught fire. Yeah, pity. Oh well, these people are happy. Ish. I mean, that would still be bad in their house price, but... Whatever. You know what? I think all the house prices are going to be shit with a big citadel full of angry people right beside you. And now we are at- oh, new Agman, which means we need to take away this, um, this thing and start bombing shit! Yeah! Okay, you're gonna die, and you're gonna die, and you're gonna die, and you're going to die. Come on, who else is gonna die? You? Oh shit, I already blew you up. Well, I don't wanna fuck up too much or else I'll run out of bombs, but I have- oh no, I got five, five hits. Alright then. Uh, please don't turn around. Please, oh, go back home. Ah, shit. Yeah, this was one problem with the game. I think they've updated things now so that, at least in some missions, when you get all your targets hit, it'll just fly you back immediately. But apparently not for this one. We have to just chill for the ride. Come on, take us back. Please, yay, there we go. Now the house prices are really bad because we just bombed their other neighbor. That's like, hmm, what's that like? It's like being on the border of the Gaza Strip. <laughs> everything's getting bombed, everything's on fire, no one's happy, everyone's angry, and your house is worth nothing. So there you go. Hey, political. Okay, I'm just gonna hereby add a ban in the comments. Don't talk about that whole situation because people will probably get all angry and fighty. I should do a video about Syria.
That would be a really easy way to just commentate my way through an entire episode of Northrend, wouldn't it? Hmm, Northrend's kind of like my vlog now. <laughs> the random... This, uh... Disjointed ramblings. Siri is crazy, I know. Problem is, like... The opposition is pretty much been hijacked by extremists, so it's just as bad. I saw this really horrible video where they pulled over these, like, three completely, you know, random, like, truck drivers, and they just lined them up on the road and executed them. And it's one thing seeing, like, an execution in a movie, but just seeing it in real life and the way the human body jerks, and it's, ugh, it's horrible. I don't get that whole, that whole thing. Ugh. I should probably shut up before I get, like, a jihad on me. That would be pretty shit. Um... I hear having a jihad on you is not a good time. Pretty sure there's some Danish cartoonists who know about that. Anyway, enough, uh, enough things. Let's just talk to Quartermaster Brevin. He's not troublesome. That's weird. I haven't been taken down to the ancient lift yet. I'm just pretty sure I would be there by now. Anyway, let's fly over in this direction. Um, and I actually, <laughs> yeah, when I reach here, I'll probably end the episode and go uh, hop over to some Final Fantasy XIV. AKA 14, because you know, the final fantasy, the final fantasy has happened 14 times. Makes sense. Ah, oh, Howling Fjord. Or as some people in the Woven Insider podcast back when this thing launched, being, uh, being from America, not caring about damn foreigners, they called it the Howling Fjord, which I thought was infinitely funny. Until Terpster corrected them and said, no, it's Fjord. Just that it's Terpster, it doesn't sound like that. Oh, Terpster. He, he went from being interesting person with World of Warcraft to turns it up in the instance and is part of the fucking Yogg's cast. And now, because of that, does nothing of interest. Which is a pity. Should I continue this quest? Ugh, oh, no. Oh, what's that? I just got a desktop notification. Final Fantasy has finished downloading. So I'm going to hop over to that. You will see me uh, soon. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. And if you want to subscribe, please consider doing so. But that said, if you made it this far, you probably already are. Anyway, see you later.